Greetings, folks. Pastor Joe here. Now, last week we talked about Jacob receiving Isaac's blessing, uh, about receiving the new name of Israel as a reward for wrestling with God, and about how um, we're continuing to follow God's covenant, the promise that God made to Abraham to make his family a great nation, uh, the, a family that would bless the other families of the world, and how that's being passed down from Abraham to Isaac and to Jacob, and now to Jacob's children. Uh, and you might recall last week uh, that we talked about how Jacob uh, desired to marry Rachel, but was also tricked into marrying Rachel's older sister, Leah. Um, just as a reminder, it wasn't uncommon at that time for a man to have uh, multiple wives, but this arrangement, uh, it didn't set the three of them up for a very peaceful household, let's say that. And so we hear in Genesis 29 and 30 uh, that there was essentially this competition uh, that formed between Leah and Rachel as they tried to um, essentially win Jacob's love and affection by burying him children. And this was a competition that they then also forced uh, Billa and Zilpah, their enslaved maidservants, uh, to participate in. It, I'm, it, you know, it is what it is. Um, and so long story short, we hear that between the four of them, they ended up giving Jacob 12 sons and a number of daughters uh, that are not listed by name in the text. Um, now, um, of all of his children, we hear that Jacob loved his son Joseph the most, possibly because Joseph was the firstborn son of Jacob's favored wife, Rachel. Um, whatever the reason, Jacob wasn't afraid to play favorites, and so he got his son Joseph this beautiful ornamented robe uh, to kind of show off to everyone um, how important Joseph was to him. And because of this obvious favoritism, Joseph's brothers hated him. Um, and it didn't help the matter that Joseph had received these dreams that someday his family, his father, his brothers, uh, that they would all bow down before him. And he shared these visions with his family, uh, and it just made his brothers hate him all the more. Because they were all older than he was, and that's not, you know, as you might remember from Jacob and Esau, those older children, you know, had preference um, within the custom of the day. So anywho, one day, when Joseph was a young man, about 17, his brothers decided to get rid of him. Uh, they, they ended up selling Joseph to some slavers to take Joseph away to the land of Egypt. Uh, and then um, Joseph's brothers took the fancy coat their father had gotten for Joseph. They dipped it in goat's blood and they returned it to their father in order to sell this lie uh, that Joseph had been killed by a wild animal while he was out away from the family home. And so uh, Jacob, you know, grieved over the loss of his son, Joseph, and Joseph, unbeknownst to him, was, you know, carted off to Egypt. And the story follows Joseph to Egypt. He's sold to one of Pharaoh's officials, does really well for himself in the household of Potiphar, the, the person that he's uh, a servant for, right up until the day when he ends up being framed by Potiphar's wife and thrown into jail for a crime that he didn't commit. Now in prison, Joseph ends up encountering a pair of former servants of Pharaoh's, a cupbearer and a baker, and Joseph is able to interpret strange dreams that the two of them were having. Uh, and in time, Joseph's interpretation of these dreams uh, is revealed to be true, and this leads eventually to Joseph being summoned before Pharaoh uh, when Pharaoh starts having dreams of his own that his advisors can't make sense of. And so Joseph is pulled out of prison, he's put before Pharaoh, and Pharaoh tells Joseph about his dreams, and Joseph tells Pharaoh that these dreams are a warning from God uh, that he is being, that Pharaoh is being given this heads up that there will be this devastating famine that's going to affect the land. But that the, the lesson that God is revealing in the midst of this dream is that if Egypt spends the next seven years, these coming seven years of plenty, storing up the abundance of the land, uh, that they, you know, from that stockpile, they will then have enough to be able to um, weather and overcome the time of famine which will follow. And so, 
you know, Pharaoh, uh, really excited that someone was finally able to interpret his dream and decides that if God has given Joseph the wisdom to understand and interpret this dream, uh, then Joseph is probably the man to be able to help him to oversee this coming time of hardship. So Pharaoh frees Joseph from his imprisonment, promotes Joseph to be his right-hand man, the governor helping to rule all over, over all of Egypt. Um, and then in the coming seven years, Egypt stores up all of its extra food. Uh, and then this famine hits, and people from all over are coming to Egypt because it's the only place anywhere that has an abundance of food and food for sale. And so who should come calling but Joseph's older brothers. There's famine all over the place, and that includes the land of Jacob. And so Jacob uh, has sent these, you know, these sons, Joseph's brothers, to Egypt in order for them to buy food for the household. And so Joseph is in Egypt. He's overseeing the distribution of the food stores. And when his brothers roll in, uh, he recognizes them. But they don't recognize him right away. It's been 13 years since they've last seen Joseph, and they don't recognize him dressed up in Egyptian finery and sitting uh, in the governor's seat. And so um, when Joseph sees them, he recognizes them. And when he last had seen his brothers, I mean, some of them were ready to kill him. And the only reason that they didn't was because some of his other brothers decided that it would be better for all of them to make a little bit of money uh, and sell him into slavery rather than killing him. Um, so, you know, not a great parting when last Joseph saw his brothers, and now Joseph is the one sitting in the seat of power and authority, and his brothers are coming uh, unknowingly asking him for help, uh, to help provide for them and for their families in the midst of this great famine. And so what do you think that Joseph did? Now that this, you know, shoe was on the other foot, so to speak, now that he was the one uh, with the power and that they were the ones who were vulnerable and coming asking for help. What would you have done if you were in Joseph's shoes? Well, to make a long story a little bit shorter, we, we hear in Scripture that Joseph forgives his brothers, reveals his identity to them. And then he tells them to go back and get their father and all of their families and to have everybody come on down to Egypt and to live there where he can provide for them. And his brothers, they just, they can't believe it. They can't believe that this is Joseph and they can't believe uh, when Joseph reveals himself that he, that he would forgive them for what they had done to him. But we hear uh, in those closing chapters of Genesis, Joseph tells his brothers, do not fear. For am I in the place of God? As for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good, to bring about that many people should be kept alive as they are today. So do not fear. I will provide for you and your little ones. And so this is the story of Joseph, Jacob's dreamer son, who God used to provide for the multitudes during a time of intense famine, who chose forgiveness for his family rather than vengeance, and who facilitated uh, the Israelites to move to the land of Egypt, which we're going to be looking at next week, um, and it will be, be significant for reasons that we'll unpack there. So think about that, about this story, about what that means for our own uh, experiences of trusting God. Consider if you will, about how, you know, here at the end of Joseph's story, uh, he claims that the brother's evil's actions God meant for good. I want you to wrestle with that a little bit about what's, what's kind of being said there. Um, and I will look forward to hearing the fruits of your thoughts and reflections, your own wrestling, um, when we gather later.